Gary Trudeau, there's something uh, very important about you, of all people, doing Alpha House for Amazon, and it's this. When I was in college, when I was first becoming aware of of uh, Doonesbury and was hearing your voice on the national stage, you know, rattling the White House, uh, questioning Vietnam. You were you were the, the voice of the future for us. The fact that that, that the Eisenhower Nixon world may be gone and there may be this bright new future. Thirty some years later, you're out there with the future medium of of streaming video, doing a show that's still rattling politics, and that's kind of neat. And it sets up kind of big stakes for you in in, in terms of career in a way, doesn't it? Uh, not really. I think everybody my age has come to terms with the fact that if we're going to continue to have careers, we have to be prepared to move laterally. And uh, this, you know, television has been a long-standing interest of mine. I've done two shows prior to this and, and uh, two pilots as well. So it wasn't entirely new. What was new, of course, was, was Amazon's model. Um, I didn't even know that Amazon had a studio when I was first uh, approached to send the script to them. And uh, it, it was a pop-up studio that had only been around for a year or so. And it was, uh, they were using an open source model and in inviting everyone to send in scripts. And um, uh, my co-executive producer, Jonathan Alter, submitted the script and uh, they got interested. It, ironically, it, it, it turned out that almost everybody that uh, uh, submitted scripts uh, in that over, over the transom uh, was not successful. Mostly they, mostly they made pilots by established producers. So we were, you know, seven of, of the eight were people who had done television before, including me. Now, the, the premise that you've set up for this, a uh, bunch of, uh, of uh, s senators uh, being roommates seems preposterous to some people, but uh, you and I know that this is a tradition of Hollywood, going back to the, I mean, Hollywood of Washington, going back to the Founding Fathers, the Willard Hotel and the old Lincoln days. <laughs> right. you know, the, the congressmen right. would room together and bunk together, and it seems crazy in the 21st century to use this as a premise for a show. But when I heard the setup of the show, I thought, this is genius, because this, this, this throws back, you know, centuries of American politics. It's well, I hadn't thought of that, but, but really, Alpha House is like the old boarding houses that uh, politicians stayed in. Um, there, this is based on an actual house uh, on Capitol Hill um, that was uh, bought by a, a congressman in uh, the late 70s, and over the years he's had a succession of, of uh, roommates, um, of most prominently uh, Chuck Schumer, who is, uh, at least in his habits, somewhat of a model for our Gil John character, and Dick Durbin. Um, and uh, th there's a, a, a string of, of roommates that, that have, have gone through the house, um, but they're all Democrats. And uh, that didn't interest me so much as a, as a, as a premise. Uh, uh, when I first uh, heard about the house and decided to, to, to take a crack at writing a script about it, um, uh, I initially thought, well, I'll make them Democrats as, as these guys are. But it was 2008, and the Republican story was more interesting because they were about uh, a tidal wave of change was about to break over the Republican Party in 2008. And so I thought it's more interesting dramatically to have these four guys struggle with that. Now, I got out of the blocks uh, too late in 2008. We had a writer's strike earlier in the year, and so I wasn't able to propose it until the spring. Uh, by then, everybody's slates were full, and uh, it just wasn't a, a realistic uh, expectation to get on the air then. So four years later, the Republican premise was even stronger because in the interim, um, the Tea Party had arrived in Washington and the mainstream middle-aged congressmen, uh, you know, moderate conservatives that I had created as characters um, were in an even more interesting dramatic position, which is they're now taking uh, fire from their right. And so they're in a kind of existential fight when we open in season one. Uh, each of them, or three of the four, are facing uh, primary challenges from Tea Party candidates, and um, uh, this is uh, this is this is difficult on all three of them. And and I thought, well, that's just much more interesting dramatically than anything I can imagine for the Democrats. The first show I did, which was called Tanner ADA, which was uh, HBO's first uh, episodic uh, television series, uh, featured a Democrat running for president. And he was an old school liberal, 
And the Democrats at that time in the post-Reagan era were really, uh, uh, before Clinton, um, showed them a way out of the wilderness with this, his third way. They were in, in, in bad shape. And um, that was a more interesting um, premise for me, dramatically, kind of the last hurrah of an old school liberal trying to, you know, in the wake of Reagan, um, uh, return to the politics of the 70s, 60s, and 70s. So, you know, it's not so much that I have a particular agenda. It's, it's more, my agenda is more that of a storyteller than, um, I mean, obviously, uh, a lot of people think of Doonesbury as kind of a rolling critique from the left, but that's kind of, you know, yeah, that, that, that informs my work. Obviously, I'm a progressive, but mostly I was drawn to the Republicans because of the dramatic potential. And they're funnier. They're just funnier. I mean, I, it's, it's really. I mean, so sorry. It's just true. The the, the setup of these of these guys uh, going to Afghanistan in your story, not because they, they they want to support the troops, not because there's 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 some higher cause here of liberty uh, and self determination for the Afghans, but because they're up for re-election. I mean, right. and, and, and it, it, that that just says so much right there. It's just hilarious. Are Republicans funnier than Democrats in general? Can you defend that? No, I don't. I don't think you can generalize like that. But but the situation they're in is just more extreme. That they're forced to take positions that that are counter to a lifetime of previous positions, and that just is that's conflict. That's that just makes 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 for good situation comedy. What uh, you know, your 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 life as a um, uh, as a cartoonist, is you know, it's a solitary uh, experience. Uh, television, like movies, is a collaborative experience to some extent. What? Um, how is this different, and how is this similar to what you imagine on a page when you set out to create Alpha House? Is it the same show that you set out, or once the other voices entered into it, and and stars and, and directors came in with ideas and said, did it evolve? Um, well, I can't say enough about actually being able to run a show. Um, that gets you a lot closer to what you might imagine. With, uh, with Robert Altman, uh, he was famous for kind of um, disregarding script when uh, he could think of something more interesting that wasn't on the page. And so that was, that was a little rough, except, except I was working with my boyhood hero. I was working with you know, one of the icons of the industry, and I knew there was a lot to learn. But I remember after after one day, one hard day of shooting, where I was listening in vain for something I might have written, um, and uh, Altman came over to me at the end of the day and he sat down and said, "You know why you write?" I said, "No. Why would that be? It's not clear to me today." And he <laughs> he said, "You write so that the characters know who they are." And for him, that's all that mattered. That he could hire actors who were up to that, who were good at improv, and that they trusted him so uh, implicitly that he could lead them wherever he wanted to go. So my job was just to make sure they, they knew who they were. Um, now, the actors, having said that, the actors like the scripts. They just as soon stay on book. But um, they trusted him, and he found so many interesting, you know, things that no one else would see, would see that, um, you know, the shows turned out uh, perhaps more interestingly than if I had just realized my vision. Now, this time out, um, I can be, as, as John Goodman calls me with, I'm sure, some great affection, uh, the script Nazi, and I can police it, and I can get every comma and every period in that I want um, because I am, I'm, I'm a producer of the show. Um, so, yeah, it gets a little closer to what I imagine. I'm not sure it's a, it doesn't make it better necessarily, but, but uh, um, yeah, I think that finally being an empresario, is, instead of just staying in my lane as, as, as a... Uh, uh, writer has real advantages. Give us some gossip about what happens behind the scenes. For example, nothing goes according to script in Hollywood. Nothing, and uh, you know, th th sets don't arrive, or they're not done on time, or somebody shows up drunk, or a storm blows through town and power goes out. A and you've got to deal with this when you're putting together this show. Any any fun, interesting disasters <laughs> happen to you that, that presented? At, you know. Uh, obstacles you had to overcome. Not one, and I'll, but I. But you know, if we ever do this again, I'll I'll be prepared. I'm sure because <laughs> I don't think anyone can be that lucky. But we had a we really had a good crew. 
we tried to take care of them, make sure they you know, had, had short enough days so they could go home and have lives. And they uh, showed their appreciation by working really hard and very efficiently. So no, we didn't have uh, any, any you know, major, I mean, we had, to, we had to make changes based on budget or you know, unexpected uh, lack of availability with actors, and you had to write around that. But, but nothing uh, too catastrophic. Oh, okay. What's coming up in season two that you can tell us about? Um, all I can tell you generally is, uh, because I'm only at the beginning of writing the scripts, but what I can tell you generally is that we have now moved from the primaries to the general election, so that when the episodes unfold this fall, you will see them, it will, it will track uh, what's actually happening politically. They will be running for the, the, the November, 12, uh, November 14 midterm elections. So now they're in a general election, so they're pivoting back to the center. And um, uh, that's, that's, the, that's the, the main story arc that drives us through the season. The guest stars that you've had are interesting, uh, from Joe Scarborough to Chris Matthews, Stephen Colbert, etc., Jane Pauley. Who, who, was, who was the hardest to get? He was a hard get, right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Jane, uh, Jane, uh, through the years, because they both used to uh, uh, work at, at 30 Rock, Jane when she was on the Today Show and Bill Murray was, when he was on Saturday Night Live, they, be, they became kind of buds because he would come down to the Today Show green room and steal donuts. And just over the years, they've been sort of pals in this unlikely friendship. And so, um, I mean, I think Bill did it because he liked the script, but, but certainly it didn't, it didn't hurt to... The, that my wife was able to get his attention. He's sort of notoriously elusive. We call him uh, the unicorn on the set. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of got there through magical thinking. Who are you uh, most proud to have gotten uh, beyond him, I guess? Uh, well, uh, Cynthia Nixon, who was, who was an old pal from, from Tanner, and, uh, and Tanner on Tanner, uh, she, she starred in the second and the sequel. Um, and I was thrilled that she's a very busy lady, and uh, we were thrilled to, to kind of uh, get her in as many episodes as we did. And, and Wanda Sykes was another one I was very excited about. Uh, and ever since I'd seen her in, in, in Curb, uh, Your Enthusiasm, you know, I, I was looking forward to seeing if I could find a place for her. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I, I think that um, uh, Matt Malloy uh, was was a wonderful uh, get because Matt, I gave, turns out I gave Matt his first job on Tanner on Tanner. Oh, wow. he, he'd been trying to decide between being a golf pro and being an actor and that, that job came along just uh, when he was at that crossroads and uh, he's had a wonderful career but I think has flown under the, under the radar. All the actors know who he is. He's really an actor's actor but uh, wasn't as, as well known to the general public in, until now. Which of these characters uh, are, are the most fun to write? Well, his, his character, Lewis, is great fun to write. And, of course, uh, it, it's impossible not to have fun writing Gil John, uh, John Goodman. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, because, because you know all the things he may do. I mean, John, John is, is so extraordinary. He makes such interesting choices. And um, so it's, it's a joy to just see him at work and, and we could use any take he does and it would work fine. Do you have any favorite scenes from the first season? I mean, you know, what, what's going to happen if, 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 as you enter the Emmys here, you have to pick certain... Oh, we're entering the Emmys? Yes, you're being entered into the Emmys, yes. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, there's uh, an Emmy consultant has been hired for the show. Uh, <laughs> to be made. Literally, they are right now. Yeah, no, I'm... I'm I'm hip to this. I know. What's oh, all right. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. it, uh, so you have to make certain decisions. You have to make a uh, decision, for example, which episodes would you submit for the writing category? Uh, do you pick one, two, three? Uh, do you have a philosophy about that? Are you picking? Are you narrowing it down, or just saying, here's the whole list. Decide for yourself. Well, I, I mean, I, you like all your children, right? So it's it's it is that is a tough thing. But I I picked um, uh, Prayer Brunch, which is I don't know if you if you've seen them all, but Prayer yeah. Brunch. Is, is what we call a bottle episode. It was all done on set, and it's a good way to save money if you don't have any, any locations for a particular episode. And uh, so it all took place in the house, or almost all. And uh, because all the characters get such juicy things to do, is because they're all sitting in a circle, uh, this prayer circle, 
Um, I, uh, that, that's a favorite. And then I think uh, episode 10, which was called Showgirls, where Lewis settles the strike in, in Las Vegas, is another favorite. Um, that had a self-contained story with him, and, and I guess I liked it because Lewis gets to win one for, for a change, because nothing ever goes right for Lewis. <laughs> and, uh, and that was a, a, you know, a fun episode that he, he and, 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 and the Wanda Sykes character, Rose, uh, solve a major problem together. The uh, uh, last question here, the, the broadcast, uh, the people who run broadcast shows are very envious of people like yourself who get uh, deals to do 10 or 11 you know, episodes instead of, they have, they've got to produce 22 or 24, and they're like, oh my God, uh, and, and they pull it off, but they say that there's a luxury to being able to define your, your story and your season in a shorter period of time. And, and it's economically smarter in some cases for networks to do that. Um, what would you do if Amazon said, "All right, we're this has been picked up by NBC. You got to do 22 of these <laughs> a year"? Well, I, I probably would push back. Um, uh, at, at this point, I'm 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 doing most of the writing, and and that would be overwhelming. So we would have to take a step back and 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 find. Folks who could do who could do these scripts. I think the advantage of, of the sh of the small number is that allows me to set a pretty strong template. And uh, as we as we move forward, at for sure, um, it's it's crazy for me to try to do this much writing when I'm also producing the show. And uh, so yeah, if there was a larger order, we'd have to find other folks who could who could uh, uh, pitch in on that. Um, because ultimately my, my responsibility is not just the writing, it's for the whole show, so I would have to back off some of the writing. All right, well, good luck to you. It's great that we've got streaming video in there now challenging cable. <laughs> just a few years ago was challenging broadcast, and now no one even knows what to call the Television Academy because it's, it's, it's everything, um, and, and you guys are helping to mix, mix it all up, and that makes it fun for us. Yeah, it's, 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 fun. It's, it's fun to be a little disruptive as... as <laughs> Like You've to, always been disruptive, kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thanks a lot, Tom. Thank you, Gary. Good luck. Bye-bye. Yeah.